Sarah, as I'd like to, again, thank you for this opportunity to speak to you. As I've been offering brief reflections in the Lenten season, this is my fourth opportunity to speak to you. Again, I hope many of you have the book entitled Life of Conversion, Meeting Christ in the Gospels by Derek Roddy. The publisher is our Sunday visitor. I'd like to begin this reflection on the theme of conversion leading to discipleship by reading first from the 10th chapter of Mark's Gospel. They came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. <clears throat> but he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up, he is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. In this theme of conversion, we know that it is necessary for discipleship. And as Sarans and as Catholic Christians, our commitment to follow Christ in discipleship means we are always learning, learning his will for us, learning of his love despite our unworthiness, and learning what he has called us to do. It's interesting in this passage from Mark's gospel, we're told that Bartimaeus, the blind beggar, is outside of Jericho. Now Jericho is significant in scripture because it was a city of great sin. It was a place full of people who did not know and were living lives contrary to God's will. In many ways, Jericho stands not just for more sinful areas of our country or world, but the sinfulness in general of the, of the world. We're told that Bartimaeus is outside the city, sitting by the roadside. Now, scripture commentators remarked the fact that Bartimaeus, his name, and that he's the son of Timaeus, is very important. Clearly, he had come from, at one time, a prominent family. And to mention a family's lineage in Scripture was extremely important. St. Augustine speculated on a reflection on this passage that he had been probably from a family of great prominence, but now was wretched, notorious, and embarrassment. That he was blind, some considered at the time of Jesus, that blindness and other ailments were caused by the sins of the parents or perhaps himself. But in any case, Bartimaeus on the roadside begging in a city known for sin is a dramatic example of a life lived contrary to God's plan. As we listen to this passage in this Lenten season, we have to begin humbly and honestly asking ourselves, have we allowed Jesus to heal our spiritual blindness? We are all guilty of original sin. In one sense, that has made us isolated. And we have to constantly fight to, through, with the help and grace of baptism and the other sacraments against that tendency of selfishness and sin. When he responds to Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. There's an also another significant detail. This, he is the only person in Mark's gospel healed by Jesus who calls him by name. Others will refer to Jesus as Messiah or Lord or Rabbi. But calling him by the name Jesus is significant for us. And his words have mercy on me. What is mercy? It's undeserved forgiveness. In fact, mercy is like an inheritance. None of us deserve an inheritance. It is pure gift. And God's mercy is pure gift. The great saints often refer to mercy as man's compassionate heart for another's unhappiness. 
It is significant in the Mass that we pray, Lord, have mercy. But it's important for us that we offer that prayer throughout the day and not just when we are at Mass. Another detail is significant from this passage. We're told that the crowd tells Bartimaeus to be quiet. How often have we allowed others, perhaps when dealing with issues that aren't necessarily appreciated in many parts of our country, the church's stand on marriage between a man and a woman, the sanctity and the dignity of life from conception to natural death, the fact that Sarah, as our patron of the Sarah Club, statues torn down and removed, have we been quiet when we should have taken a stand and called out Jesus' name for us to reflect upon in these days of Lent? Significant words also are spoken, and Jesus stopped. Jesus actually stops. Call him. That's an especially important reflection for us as Sarans. We are all called, we all have a vocation, and the first vocation, of course, is to holiness. Last month in February, I gave the retreat at St. Patrick's Seminary for about 40 men, college age and above, on discernment, to see whether or not they were called to priesthood. No matter what our vocation may be, it is in our prayer that we ask God's grace to help us become more in tune with the will of the Father. Those words again of Jesus, take heart, rise. He is calling you. The words that were spoken to by the crowd. Who were those people? Some say it might have been other individuals who were passing him by. Still others say, no, it was Jesus' closest friends. It was his disciples who say, take heart, rise. He is calling you. There's another time when the word take heart is spoken. This time by Jesus. Recall that passage from Matthew's Gospel when Jesus is walking on the water and they become very scared. Jesus says, take heart as I have no fear. Conversion of heart and life enables us to encourage others to walk that path, the path of discipleship, the path of holiness. We're told that Bartimaeus throws off his cloak. The cloak is a symbol of sin in our past life. In our own lives, as we respond to conversion, it means that we're going to have to throw off sin and ego and selfishness. And how do we go about that? Through prayer and through action. And as you've heard me often say when I've spoken to Sarans, the importance of humility, gratitude, and generosity. What do you want me to do for you? The question Jesus asked of Bartimaeus and he asks each one of us. Bartimaeus says, Master, let me receive my sight. But how would you respond to that question? What do you want me to do for you? The beauty of the season of Lent is we're given an opportunity of quiet prayer. And many parishes, if not all, there are additional opportunities for the Sacrament of Reconciliation, which helps us grow in holiness. And as a tangible example, of our commitment to say yes to conversion. We all have Bartimaeus moments, and we need to ask Jesus to help open our eyes to see his love and the Father's wonder. A few questions you might ask yourselves in the days that remain in Lent. Are there areas of spiritual blindness in your life? How often do you call out Jesus for help? What is your unique call? How did you discover it? And how has discipleship continued to change your life? Let us pray for and with one another in this season of Lent. And let us pray in a very special way that each of us will grow in holiness through God's grace. And that we may, by prayer and encouragement, help foster a culture of vocation here in the United States. God bless all of you.